Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because a lot of times companies think they have to do what you said, replace the entire tech stack, which could take years. And we're sitting here in 2025 trying to figure out how to address these challenges now. And so I think, you know, a lot of what organizations can do is they can certainly, you could have two paths, two parallel paths you pursue. One might be the long-term path that is the more ideal path, but then you have a shorter term interim parallel path that's getting you immediate value. So, you know, we see a lot of clients right now, they're saying, let's hold off on our ERP initiative, our broader ERP replacement initiative. We'll still do it, you know, but we're planning, you know, three to four years out for something like that. Whereas we want to look at AI and other tools we can get immediate value out of right now. And those two paths will eventually merge together and coexist. So they're not competing or duplicate efforts necessarily. It's just reprioritizing where you can get the most value. And I think it's actually super healthy for companies to think that way because it, the good thing with what you're describing is whenever there's a crisis like this or a challenge or a problem, it tends to make um, leaders a lot more laser focused on what's important. And it'll, it makes it easier for them to throw out the garbage and just ignore the, the noise, you know, of options. Whereas in good times, you know, when there's not that level of urgency, it's, it's a lot easier to get enamored by cool bells and whistles and technologies that you don't necessarily need and aren't going to necessarily deliver you value in the short term or long term or maybe never. So I think that that's the good silver lining in all this is it does create a sense of urgency and clarity for a lot of leaders in terms of what they need to focus on to get more immediate value and not necessarily have to wait years and years to replace their entire tech stack.